Heyo duckies, Andy Lippy here, back with another OBS tutorial, and this one is tailored to you Mac users out there. You guys have been requesting it, I've had it so much in the comments, when is Shader Filter coming for Mac? Well, it's now officially here. Thanks to QMe Productions, I think that's how you pronounce it, it is completely available, he's had the help from the one and only Exceldro, and this is based around CERN's incredible shader filter plugin that is available for windows let's just get into it get it all installed put your rock over the stone let's go this portion of the video is sponsored by owned.pro owned.pro have got absolutely everything for your stream they've got over 600 different overlays and alert packages and right now they actually have partnered with epidemic sound so you can get tons of loyalty free music and sounds on your stream for a super super cheap price you can also save yourself 50 percent off your entire membership using offer code andy 50 pro at checkout i'll leave all the links in the description and and they go a long way to supporting the channel, all right? Thank you very much, Own.Pro, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Right, so first up, we need to get it downloaded. So we're going to jump to the OBS website. I'm going to put the link in the description down below and just hit download it. If it's not downloading at all, hold down the Alt or Option key and click, and then it should download. Once downloaded, we can open up that folder and you should see an OBS shader filter folder. We're just going to copy that folder itself. And we're going to go to applications on the left and scroll down until we find OBS. We'll select OBS, right click and press show package contents. Then click into contents and then we're going to go into the resources folder and then into data and then inside of OBS plugins. And we're just going to paste that folder that we copied directly into there. Now we can close that down and we can head into OBS itself. Once OBS is loaded, I'm going to add a source in here so we can actually see the shader filter in action. So I'm going to use a color source just because it's pretty plain and easy to see what's going on there. So making this full screen, you can see I've got a rectangle that's in the middle of the screen, just a plain white one. I want to add a border, so I'm going to right click and press filters. Hit the plus sign and then go to shader filter. If you're not seeing shader filter, it means you've probably not installed it correctly, so go back a step. So we'll get some options on the right hand side with all these different expand left, right, etc. We're going to come back to them in a second. We're going to press load from file and press browse. It should open up in the correct folder, but if not, you need to go to OBS, contents, resources, data, OBS plugins, OBS shader filter, and once in there, go to data and then press examples. And then you'll see a bunch of different shaders and effects that we can use in there. So for the first example, I'm going to be using the border shader just to add a border around this source that we've got. So we're going to select border.shader and press open. Once open, you can probably see there's no border at all. So we actually need to tell it to add some extra pixels around the edge. And this will be the border. The first thing I'm going to do is actually change the border color. So we can select a color. I'm going to choose bright red and press OK. And as you can see, there's still no border there because we need to add these pixels. So in expand left, I can put in a number here and you'll see we start seeing a bit of a red border. 20 increases the size because we're basically adding pixels to the edge of this source. So I'm going to add them to the left, the right, the top and the bottom. And now I've got a full border around this white source that we've actually added in there. We can actually add more shader filters as well. You don't just have to use one per source. I'm going to add another one, press load from file again, press browse, go into that same folder directory and data and then examples. And this time I'm going to use a dot effect file because that is a little bit different this time. So for this example, I'm going to use the pulse dot effect shader and I'm going to open that. You probably see nothing's happened. It's not there this time. So we need to actually tell shader filter that we're using an effect. So we're going to press the override entire effect button. Tick that. Again, nothing's happened. We need to press reload effect. Now the, our source is back, but it's not doing anything. So we need to mess around with the integers and values at the bottom to create the different effects. So you can see now I've got the speed set, the minimum growth pixels, and the max growth pixels. And you can see it very slowly zooming in and out, kind of pulsating, just like the effect says. We could change it to use sliders, and we can obviously move the sliders, and you can see it actually doing things now. All these different shaders and shader filters will do completely different things. So make sure you do just tinker with the settings to get exactly what effect that you're looking for. 
So there we go. We can start editing little things. I'm going to create a really large zoom now. So as you can see, it's going really, really slowly. So there's a million and one different things that you can do with shader filters. It is awesome. One really important thing to know is when you are using your different dot shader and dot effect files, make sure you do set them up exactly as I said. So if it's a dot shader, make sure the override entire effect is turned off and we can press reload effect and it will reload it and uh, vice versa. So just fiddle around with them settings until you get it to work. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's so easy to do, right? And now all you Mac users are going to elevate your streams and have all the cool different features that I've been showcasing on this channel you'll be able to use on your stream, which is beautiful. I just want to say a huge thanks to all these people just here that helped me make this content full time. Please consider joining Patreon or the YouTube channel members or just leave a tip or something like that. It will go a massive way to support me making this content full time for you guys, all right? Check out one of these videos just here because that will actually show you how to get different shaders and cool settings for them. Put your rug over the stone. I'll see you in the next one.